guys, it's Sami and Anthony here for Signal by Sony. Now, in case you haven't heard, Sony recently announced some new cameras this month. One being the Alpha NEX C3, a camera I'm super stoked about because it's giving a whole new group of photographers creative control over their photography. Yeah, now I actually own the NEX 3, which is the predecessor to this camera, so you've probably heard me talk about it before. I mean, I am a big DSLR user. I'm big into the quality of my photographs and I like having a lot of manual control and the NEX 3 gives me that in a very small, very portable package, so I'm super into it. And the NEX C3 still has all of the same traditional features as the NEX3 and the NEX5. It's slightly smaller and lighter though, you can see here, uh, and it's got a new sensor and a new processor. Yeah, I like the smaller size, it's more compact. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's definitely easier to transport. But here's the thing, the key difference is actually in the interface. Now, I know there are a lot of point and shoot users out there that want to get more creative with photography, sure. but maybe the idea of using a DSLR is a little too intimidating because of the size and the number of advanced settings. I know I'm guilty of that. <laughs> What's great about the Alpha NEX C3 is that the interface changes all of that. So here's the deal. The camera has a photo creativity area mm -hmm. that turns techie photography terms like exposure into simple ones like brightness. You can actually adjust those settings up and down. There are also some cool new picture effects yeah, like retro and pop color that actually work in both photo and video, meaning yeah. the photos you know, actually come out with different looks without any post-production. In fact, just so you guys can see how the NEX C3 can make even me a more advanced photographer, Anthony and I actually hit up a nearby national park and brought a couple of cameras with us. Now, of course, I took photos with the new NEX C3 using the easy photo creativity interface, and Anthony showed off his advanced skills by taking the same photos with his NEX 3 using manual settings. Okay, so uh, the first thing we tried out was the aperture versus background defocus. So aperture is essentially controlling the opening of your lens, mm -hmm. like how wide open your lens is, and uh, you can get uh, shallower and deeper depth of field, so you get those nice kind of like dramatic effects. So mm -hmm. we, we took a picture in uh, in the park by a river yes. of a tree in the foreground and then a river in the background and matched up pretty, pretty well. You got your set faster than mine, I think. Yeah, mine's a lot easier. I mean, not, I don't want to say it's easier to use, but for someone who doesn't have, you know, all the technical training with, you know, photography, it was mm -hmm. definitely easy to just kind of scroll it up and down to really find the right setting to kind of match it. So. And that probably, I mean, that probably wasn't something that you had messed around with a lot before. I mean, you'd seen probably a lot of depth of field stuff in cameras, but didn't know how to control no, that. No, totally. I'm, I'm, I'll admit it, I'm a point and shoot user, but mm. this definitely like made me feel like a cool photographer in yeah. the moment. <laughs> yeah, the other one we tried out was uh, exposure value versus brightness. Now mm -hmm. exposure value uh, kind of compensates for the exposure in the camera and brings up your darks a little mm -hmm. bit and, uh, so you can, like it works really well for backlit stuff like mm -hmm. the trees we took a picture of. Yeah, totally. And, uh, and once again, I think on this one, you had slightly more granular control than I did. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's cool when you have words like brightness. I mean, you know what bright means. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so it's like anyone can understand, like, oh, this makes it brighter, this makes it darker. It's pretty easy to use. Totally. And uh, one of the biggest things in photography or in videography is, is white balance, setting, mm -hmm. the, setting your white balance and getting the color temperature of things right. Um, the NEX C3 calls that just color. Yeah. <laughs> so you were able to just change the color temperature. And we did some cool stuff uh, by, that, by that creek where we made it look really warm and sunny. Yeah. And uh, Then we, we did trees and yeah. we kind of gave it that whole blue tone effect. Yeah. For me, while I'm setting all these things manually, um, you are setting them using Literally the menu up, icons. Yeah, I was just like up and down, mm -hmm. adjusting it, and it was, I was, you know, for me to take a picture, it took like, you know, a couple seconds. Yeah. The other cool thing is you can see all the effects on the LCD before you take the photo, including the creative effects. Yes. Which was interesting. You know, a lot of people are taking like, these really creative photos. There are a lot of creative photo apps for, for oh, mobile totally. devices and stuff right now. It's like the cool thing to do. It's yeah. like, I'm gonna be artsy on my phone. Totally. Let's take a cool picture. So it's nice to see that in a camera. And, and the cool thing about having it in the camera and having it live like that is a lot of those apps don't show you what your photo is gonna look like before it's done. Yeah, you have to take the picture and then, you know, kind of post produce it almost. Right. You know, and then kind of have a fancy picture. What's cool about this, it's like I just did so something like pop color. Next thing you know, everything's black and white except for your blue shirt. Yeah. Now the thing that was really, really interesting about these picture effects, uh, retro color, pop color, uh, toy camera, mm -hmm. I thought that they were just going to be for still pictures, but they work in video mm -hmm. in real time, which 
It was super cool. really, <laughs> really cool. So as soon as I found that out, I walked around the uh, the neighborhood and walked around the office and played with it a little bit. Yeah. And it's really awesome to do those live and not have to do any post production it's on your amazing. video. You just get these really cool kind of like classic film looks. It right. looks like an old home movie or something. Literally. It's really fun to mess with. There's going to be a firmware update that puts all of the new stuff from the C3 onto the NEX3. This is cool because all of the stuff that I love about this you know, minus the physical improvements and the sensor improvements are coming to my camera, so that's great. And you have, you know, if you have a few dollars to spare, you might as well get a second camera, why not, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, if you are ready to step up from a point and shoot, the NEX C3 will be available in August with an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens for about 650 bucks, and you can get it in silver, black, or pink. All the details are on the Sony website. I saw you clapping for pink out of the corner of my eye. I was clapping for pink, Anthony. <laughs> and to stay on top of everything Sony makes, you can watch more of our videos at youtube.com slash signal. For now, this is Sami and Anthony signing off.